Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today we're going to talk about LXL International AS and A Levels Pure Mathematics 2. So in today's lecture, we're going to continue with Unit 2 Algebra and Functions. Okay, let's just briefly review what we have learned in the previous lecture. So given two polynomials, fx and gx. So when fx divides gx, we have another polynomial, hx, without remainder. So we call gx is a factor of fx. And also hx is a factor. So how about if fx divides gx, we have a polynomial hx, and also we have a remainder rx, so here, the degree of Rx is smaller than the degree of Gx. Okay, so in this case, Gx is not a factor, and Rx is called the remainder of Fx dividing Gx. Okay, so today we're going to look at a special case. So that is when gx is a linear polynomial. So it can be written as gx equals to ax plus b. So the first theorem we're going to learn is called factor theorem. So what is factor theorem? Actually, it has several parts. So the first one is when a equals to 1. So gx will just be x plus b. Okay, so if gx is a factor of polynomial fx, then we know f negative b equals to 0. Okay, so let's say, for example, if x plus 1 is a factor of x plus 1 squared, right? So this is gx, this is fx. Then f negative 1 equals to 0. Okay, so that's the first conclusion in this factor theorem. The second one. So if f negative b is, sorry, equals to 0, then gx equals to x minus negative b, which is x plus b, is a factor of fx. Okay, so here let's say if I have fx equals to x cubed minus 1. So we know f1 is 0. Then x minus this root 1 is the factor of this fx. Okay, so that's a special case when this uh, linear coefficient equals 1. And if a is not equal to 1, so we have gx equals to ax plus b. So if uh, f negative b over a equals to 0. Then gx is a factor of fx. And also we can have if gx equals to ax plus b is a factor of polynomial fx, then f negative b over a equals to 0. So basically, the root of gx, which is negative b over a, is also a root of this fx. Same thing here. So the root of gx, which is negative b, is also a root of fx, if gx is a factor. OK, so let's just take a look at one example, so how we can apply this factor theorem. So let's say if we know x minus 1 is a factor of 5x cubed minus 9x squared plus 2x plus a. And can you find out what is a? Okay, so this is our fx, and this is gx. So as we just mentioned, if gx is a factor of fx, then its root will also be a root of fx. So the root of gx is x minus 1 equals to 0, x equals to 1. So we know f1 should also be 0. So f1 equals to 5 times 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus a. So this equals to 5 
minus 9 plus 2 plus a so it's a so here minus 2 equals to 0 so from here we know a is 2 okay so that's the first application maybe we can try another one so let's say if x minus 1 2x minus 1 so both are factors of px cubed plus qx squared plus 9x minus 2. Can you find out what is p and what is q? Actually, this question is on page 10 of the textbook, and it's question 14. Okay, so we know x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial. Let's call this polynomial fx. So we know the root of x minus 1 is also the root of fx. So we know f1 should be 0. And same thing. So 2x minus 1 is a factor of fx. So the root of 2x minus 1, which is 1 over 2, is also a root of fx. So we can just write uh, f1, which is p plus q plus 9 minus 2 is p plus q plus 7 is 0. And f1 over 2, so it's p over 8 plus q over 4 plus 9 over 2 minus 2 is also 0. So here's q. Okay, so we just need to solve these two equations. So we can have p equals to negative 7 minus q and plug into the second equation. So we have 7 plus q over 8 equals to q over 4 and plus 9 over 2 minus 2. Probably we can times uh, 8. So we have 7 plus q equals to 2q and 4 times 9, 36, 8 times 2, 16. So we have q equals to uh, plus, okay, 20, 13, 0, right? So q equals to negative 13. And then we have p equals to negative 7 minus negative 13. So it will be 6. Okay, so that's how we do this question. And also, you can continue factorize this polynomial, right? So because we know what is p, we know what is q. So in this case, you can do a long division as we learned in previous lecture. Okay, so that's the first theorem. Let's take a look at the second theorem. So this is called remainder theorem. So we have a polynomial fx and also we have a polynomial gx as we just mentioned we have this gx is a linear polynomial so ax plus b okay so i want to find out the uh, remainder when fx divides gx okay so actually this one equals to f negative b over a so what is uh, negative b over a so that is the root of this gx so this will be the remainder so you may ask so if we plug in negative b over a into this polynomial f so we're going to have a number so this is correct right so why is that because gx degree is one since the highest degree of the x term is 1. And the degree of a constant number is 0. So as we mentioned, the remainder's degree must be smaller than this gx degree. So it makes sense. Okay, so let's just take a look at one example. So if I have 1, 2, 5, x, 4, and plus 5, x cubed, minus 9x this is our fx and also we have our gx equals to 5x plus 3 so we want to find out the remainder of fx divides gx okay so as we mentioned we can use long division to do that so we have 1 to 5x4 plus f uh, 5x3 and then we don't have x2 so we just write 0x2 and a minus negative uh, minus 9x and we don't have constant terms we can plus a 0 and then we have 5x plus 3 so in order to have 1 2 5 x 4 so we have 25 x cubed so 1 2 5 x 4 and plus 25 x cubed times 3 which is 75 x cubed and then we have 5 minus 75 negative 70 x cubed 
and then plus 0x squared. And then we have negative 4, uh, so 5, 7, negative 70, so 14x squared. So we'll have negative 70 cube, x cube minus 42x squared. So 0x squared minus negative 42x squared will be 42x squared and minus 9x. And then here we'll have negative, um, sorry, positive 42 over 5x, right? So we'll have 42x squared and plus, so here will be 1, 2, 6 over 5x. And then we'll have this one, negative 9. Is that 1, 2, 6? Okay, so negative 9 minus 1, 2, 6 over 5. So this will be negative 5. And here, 45. So 1, 7, 1. Okay, so negative 1, 7, 1 over 5x and plus 0. Okay, so in order to have negative 1, 7, 1, 5 over x, so we need to minus 171 over 25. Okay, so we have negative 1, 7, 1, 5x and a minus, so will be 3, 5, 1, 3 over 25. So the remainder will be 5, 1, 3 over 25. Okay, so we have this uh, polynomial here and remainder is 5, 1, 3, 25. Okay, let's try to see if that's correct. So we just plug in the number uh, negative 3 over 5, right? Because that's the root of gx into fx. So f negative 3 over 5. So it will be 1 to 5 times negative 3 over 5 raised to the power of 4 plus 5 times negative 3 over 5 raised to the power of 3. Minus 9 times negative 3 over 5. Okay, so here we'll have um, so 5 and then 81. And here we'll have negative 25 and then 27. And then we have 5 on 27. So it looks quite okay. So these two together, so we have 5, 108, minus 27, 25. Okay, so we have 25, so this one will be 540 minus 27, so which is 513 over 25. So that's exactly right. Okay, so this is how we apply this theorem. Maybe we can find uh, another example. Okay, so this example is on page 13, and it's question 10. So we have a polynomial fx equals to 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus px and plus q. Okay, and we know it is divisible by x minus 1. So that means x minus 1 is a factor of fx. Or you can write as fx is divisible by x minus 1. So these two statements are equivalent. Okay, so we also have 1 divided by x plus 1. So the remainder will be 10. Okay, can we find out what is p and what is q? Okay, sorry, here should be p times x. Okay, so what we can do here is we can combine those two theorems. So the first one is a factor theorem. The second one is a remainder theorem. So factor theorem says if x minus 1 is a factor of fx, then the root of this x minus 1 is also a root of fx. So the root of x minus 1 is x equals to 1. So we have f1 equals to 3, 1 cubed plus 2, 1 squared, minus p times 1 plus q equals to 0. So we have our first equation, so which is p minus q equals to 5. Okay, so now we use the remainder theorem. So remainder theorem says if um, this x plus 1, so when fx divides x plus 1, we have remainder 10. Then we know if you plug in the root of this x plus 1 into fx, we'll have a value of 10. So f negative 1 equals to negative 3 plus 2 plus p plus q equals to 10, which is a remainder. So we have the second equation, p plus q equals to 13 minus 2, 11. 
Okay, so we'll have P equals to 8 and Q equals to 3. So it's done. This is pretty quick, right? So you can also try this out by using long division. So we have 3x cubed plus 2x squared and then minus 8x and plus 3. And then we have x minus 1. Okay, so we'll have 3x squared, so 3x cubed minus 3x squared. And then we have 5x squared. And then minus 8x and plus 5x. And then we have 5x uh, squared minus 5x. So we have negative 3x plus 3. Negative 3, negative 3x three plus 3 equals to 0. Correct. So that's a factor. Also, you can do the same thing and use fx to divide x plus 1. You should get a remainder of 10. Okay, so here we can just talk a little bit more. Why we have this remainder theorem. So let's say if fx divides ax plus b, right? So we have a quotient, let's just call it qx, and then we have a remainder, so which is f negative b over a. So why is this? So think about what is qx, what is ax plus b? So according to the definition, so ax plus b times qx and plus this remainder polynomial should equal to fx. Right? It's the same thing as we say 10 divides 3, we have 3 remainder 1. So we use this 3 times this 3, so which is ax plus b times qx, and plus this remainder will get 10. Okay, so when we plug in x equals to negative b over a, right? So this one should be 0 because ax plus b is 0. So this one should be r negative b over a. And this one is f negative b over a. Okay, so because we know ax plus b is here, so this remainder rx must be a number because its degree of this polynomial rx must be smaller than the degree of ax plus b. So ax plus b's degree is 1, so rx degree must be 0, so it must be a number. So it doesn't have this x, right? So you can just write this as a number. So this is a number. So we know the remainder equals to f negative b over a. Okay, so that's uh, for this question. Let's just take a look at the syllabus. So we have this um, simple algebraic division. So we did this in use of the factor theorem and remainder theorem. Only division by ax plus b or ax minus b. So it's a linear polynomial. And students should be able to know that if fx zero equals to 0 when x equals to b over a, then this one is a factor of fx. So we talked about this. And be able to factorize cubic expression. So let's just take a look at this too. How do we factorize? So x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. So let's just call this fx. Okay, so in this case, it's quite obvious. f1 equals to 1 plus 3 minus 4 equals to 0. So f1 is 0, then we know 1, x minus 1 is a factor of fx. Okay, so in this case, we can have a long division here, x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4 over x minus 1. So have x squared, x cubed minus x squared. So this will be 4x squared minus 4. So here minus 4x, so will be 4x squared minus 4 equals to 0. So we know fx equals to x minus 1 times x squared minus 4x. And this one we can just factorize as x times x minus 4. Okay, so how about the second one? So if we have gx equals to 6x cubed plus 11x squared minus x minus 6. So maybe let's just try, um, so 1 obviously is not working, so how about negative 1? So if I have x equals to negative 1, negative 6 plus 11 plus 1 minus 6, so this will be 0. So it's quite obvious x plus 1 is a factor. So now we can do a long division. Okay, so we have 6x squared, so we'll have 6x cubed plus 6x squared. So 5x squared minus x, and then plus 5x. 5x squared plus 5x. So negative 6x minus 6. So negative 6, negative 6x minus 6 equals to 0. 
So this one equals to x plus 1, 6x squared plus 5x minus 6. Okay, so this one can be tried. So 2, 3, right? So you have 2, 3, 3, 2, so 9, 4, correct? So we'll have um, x plus 1, 2x plus 3, 3x minus 2. Okay, so usually for the first one, so the, you know, the x plus 1 and also this x minus 1, so we just try. So we try 1, negative 1, so maybe 2, negative 2, that's it. And then if we have this f2 equals to 0, then we know x minus 2 will be the first uh, factor, and then you can get a, um, sorry, quadratic uh, factor just by using long division. And the quadratic one, you can just factorize by using this product. Okay, students should be familiar with the terms quotient, so we understand what is quotient and remainder, and be able to determine the remainder when this fx is div uh, divided by ax plus b. So the remainder will just be f negative b over a. Again, negative b over a is the root of this ax plus b. Okay, so that's everything for uh, like chapter 2. Okay, because there is only one challenge question for this uh, chapter, so we can just do it right now. So this on page 11. So we have this fx, a polynomial, and then we want to show f1 equals to 0 and f negative 3 equals to 0. Okay, so in exam, because we know this is 0, right? But you still need to write this out, otherwise you will uh, like lose some marks. So you can just write f1, so just plug in the value and 2 times 1 raised to the power of 4, minus 5 times 1 raised to the power of 3, minus 42 times 1 raised to the power of 2, minus 9 times 1 plus 54. So this will be 2 minus 5 minus 42 minus 9 plus 54. So these two together, 56, and then 14, uh, 56 equals to 0. Okay, and then we have f negative 3. So it will be 2 negative 3 raised to the power of 4. Minus 5 times negative 3 raised to the power of 3, minus 42, negative 3 raised to the power of 2, and minus 9 times negative 3 plus 54. Okay, so here is 2 times 81 plus 5 times 27, minus 42 times 9, and plus 9 uh, times 3, which is 27, plus 54. Okay, so let's try to combine something. So here we have this 3 together. So we have 5. 6, 8, so 8 times 54, uh, sorry, 8 times 27, and plus 2 times 81, minus 42 times 9. Okay, so of course you can use a calculator, so here we can just take out maybe 9. So we have 8 times 3, plus 18, minus 42. 24 plus 80, 42, minus 42, 0. Okay, so we've done the first one. Number two, solve fx equals to zero. Okay, so we know two solutions, right? So x equals to one or x equals to negative three. So those are solutions. And also we know there are um, some other solutions. So what can we do? Because f1 equals to zero, f negative three is equals to zero. So we know x minus one and x plus three are factors of fx. Okay, so we can write fx as x minus 1 times x plus 3 and times a quadratic term. So let's just call it ax squared plus bx plus c. So there are two methods to solve this problem. So the first one you can do is we can just do a long division. So we'll have fx here. So 2x4 minus 5x3 minus 42x squared, minus 9x plus 54. And then divide these two together, right? So this will be x squared plus 3x minus x, so plus 2x minus 3. Okay, so we just write here x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, so in order for this one to become 2x4, so we times 2x2. So we have 2x4, and then here we have 4x cubed, and then minus 6x squared. Okay, so negative 5x cubed minus 4x cubed will be negative 9x cubed. And here we have negative 36x squared. So we drop one more term, minus 9x. And then we have um, minus uh, 9x, so will be negative x cubed minus 18x 
and plus 27x. Okay, so here we have negative x squared, and then we have minus 36x plus 54. And then we have minus 18. So we have negative 18x squared minus 36x and plus 54 equals to 0. So we know the quadratic term will be 2x squared minus 9x minus 18. So fx will be x minus 1, x plus 3, and then 2x squared minus 9x minus 18. Okay, so now we can just solve for this uh, quadratic equation. Probably we can do a factorization. So 3, 6, 6, 3, right? Negative. So 3 minus 12 is negative 9, correct. So we have x minus 1, x plus 3, and then x minus 6, 2x minus, plus 3. So I have x equals to 1, negative 3, 6, negative 3 over 2. So those are the roots of fx equals to 0. Okay, so there is a second method to solve this problem. So let me just erase this. So you don't need to do the long division. So in this case, we just need to expand the brackets. So let's just have some space here, right? Okay. All right, so we have this um, ax squared plus bx plus c. So it's quite obvious a must be 2 because the leading coefficient is 2. So we can just change this to 2 directly. Okay, so we'll have fx equals to x squared plus 2x minus 3 and times 2x squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so we just expand this one. So we have 2x4 and plus b plus 4 together x cube. Okay, and then, so is that correct? So b here and then 4. Yes, and then we have square. So it will be c and then uh, minus 6 and then plus 2b. So here will be x square. Okay, and then we will have the... Uh, for the x, right? So for the x, we'll have 2c and a minus 3b together x. And finally, we have negative 3c. So this equals to 2x4 minus 5x cubed and minus 42x squared minus 9x plus 54. So we have 54 equals to negative 3c because they are constant terms. So we have c equals to negative 18. And also, we have b plus 4 equals to negative 5. So we have b equals to negative 9. Okay, so we've got b and c. So now we have this 2x squared minus 9x minus 18, and you can continue with the factorization. So it's up to you, like which method you want to use to solve the second part of this question. Okay, so that's everything for chapter 2. So we hope you have enjoyed our lectures and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free School Exam Preparation. Thank you.